Steven Spielberg and George Lucas of PGA Majors put some things together so it took a little time. Inshallah, may Allah bless them. So I'm just waiting for a signal from them. We good? You can go ahead. Okay. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. الحمد لله حمدا يدوم بدوام اللحظات والأنفاس وأشكره يد الدهر شكرا ما غفل عنه الناس والنسناس قدم نبينا على كل الناس وسقانا من عذب سنته أعذب كاس وجعلنا من أمته خير أمة أخرجت للناس أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له شهادة أدخرها ليوم مجموع له الناس وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله سيد الناس وسراج الهداية والنبراس صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه ليوث الباس البررة الأكياس لا سيما الصديق الثابت يوم ردة الناس وعمر قاهر الجبابرة والأشراس وعثمان الصابر يوم الشهادة على مرير الكاس وعليا ذا النجدة وشدة الباس والمهاجرين والأنصار ما تلا تال يا أيها الناس وتعطرت الأفواه بذكر الله والصلاة والسلام على سيد الناس يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون واتقوا يوما ترجعون فيه إلى الله ثم أما بعد I believe I have to bring this mic load down If I keep it where it was I will blow it <laughs> So الحمد لله Still can pick up right Okay بارك الله فيكم uh, to our brothers and sisters in faith, we are delighted and elated to be back here in PJMA. After a while, by the permission of Almighty, we are convened again here in this place. The one who had gathered us here, we pray and implore that he bring all of us together on the door of judgment and the arsh of his own arsh behind the Khatam al-Anbiya wal Mursaleen Muhammad sallallahu wa sallam alayhi. I ask Almighty to bless the leadership of this place, the Imams, the brothers, sisters. Uh, tonight what we have, it's only 30 minutes talk and we have 50 minutes Q&A's bi-idhnillah, to ask whatever you want to ask bi-idhnillah ta'ala. And I'm delighted to meet a young hafiz who led us in Isha prayer, who reminded me of an incident that took place between me and him like maybe what, seven years ago or eight? He said, do you recall me? I said, maybe you have to bring it out, inshallah wa ta'ala, with the lens of sun or Canon camera, not Hitachi, so I can recall. He said, well, in Manassas, you once came and you talked about something that you quoted a verse. قُلْ فِيهِمَا إِثْمٌ كَبِيرٌ وَمَنَافِعُ لِلنَّاسِ And you say, إِثْمٌ كثير." And I said, Sheikh, that was wrong. And, uh, and you responded that, uh, may Allah bless you, but this is another level. And when you said that, I remember. And I told him, قُلْ فِيهِمَا إِثْمٌ كَبِيرٌ وَإِثْمٌ كَبِيرٌ شَاعَ بِالثَّامُ ثَلَّثًا That is the narration of Imam Hamza and Kisai. So he reminded me with this, see, the young boys, they don't forget. Because they do not have extra bills to pay, unlike their own parents. <laughs> you see, the parents, you give them something to memorize. By the time they open their own mailbox and see, you know, some, you know, the rent that I do, they forget all what they learned from the masjid. So I ask Allah to bless him, bless his parents, and bless his brother. 
and we are really excited and this is what we were talking about earlier that we need them and tonight please forgive me I will keep it real and raw direct to the point not zigzagging and we're not going to navigate because we're not Lincoln navigators <laughs> so in case we go straight please pardon us so today there's no sidewind the movement there's no rattlesnake you know voices there's no racist snakes if you know the dynamics of the snakes so we will keep it straight to the point I'm not gonna dress it up to bless it up because I have no catch up <laughs> so inshallah ta'ala the way that you came here I would like to address mainly three the youth our sisters and those who had lost hope that they believe they can make it due to their past I want to address those three the youth our sisters and those who had lost hope in Allah that either they've done so much in their past that they don't think Almighty Allah will accept them my talk tonight it's directly to them if you one of them welcome if not you still welcome it's just like uh, you know the AOL you know mail they say welcome you've got mail it's the long joint the old one before you know Gmail B mail D mail and all the mails came in the world so tonight the youth that are here please pay attention and I will be asking you some questions. We did not come here to entertain because we do not have white gloves. See, so if I don't have the white gloves, that means I'm not Michael Jackson. And you can see the color I didn't change it. <laughs> and you see that I did not cap mine. So that means 50 cent had left his cent. <laughs> and two had forsaken his park. And Snoop forgot his own dog. And eyes has nothing to do with his cube <laughs> so that means tonight even if Justin will come here his Bieber will tell him this is not your spot <laughs> so the young boys I want you all to pay attention the boys in the street they've divided Muslims into three categories the boys in the street and the girls in the street they've divided Muslims into three categories and when we say the boys and the girls in the street, we're not talking about them being outside literally like in the street. You say this avenue or this um, lane or this boulevard or this, that, that's not what we're talking about. When we say in the street, wherever they are other than Muslim spot or other than masajid, they're in the street. Can be in a university, but they have no attachment with the house of Allah whatsoever in the street. Or they're sitting in the Starbucks, just boxing but between themselves, they're still in the street. Or they're in the KFC, popping the chicken, they're still in the street. Or they're ringing the bell in the Taco Bell, they're still in the street. Or they're in the wind, is eating whatever wind is providing in the windy day, they're still in the street. So when we say the boys and the girls outside in the street, we're not talking about them being outside, literally standing in the street. We mean they are somewhere and they do not care about coming in the masjid because they think masjid are not providing for them what they need. And as a result, what is the point? Just let's go somewhere and just chill out and have good time. Because masjid will not provide what we need. So they're somewhere else. Those people in the street, they've divided and categorized Muslims into what? How many groups? Three. The first category is they call them the baby boomers. The baby what? The baby boomers. The second category, they, they call them X generation. And then the third generation or the third category, they call them what? The millennials. So the first is what? The second? And the third? So the baby boomers are those from what? 50 and above. X generation from 35 and above. Millennials from 30 all the way down or 35 down. So the one speaking to you tonight is of those millennials. So that's why we can take from them and delineate on the X generation and also drop behavior on the baby boomers. 
and you ask them that why you call them baby boomers? Because they say that's all what they booming. <laughs> X generation, why? It is said because we get, you know, this, this, you know, this connection between us and them, we can connect. So if you ask them something and they start giving something in 19, like let's say 40s or like 50s, something in 60s, they say, you know, you, you're too old. You see some brothers, the ex generations, they say, Brother Imam, Allah Akbar, I praise Allah in my house, I get no TV. The millennials say that you're too late. Today we don't need TV, we get TV in our pockets. Them phones, even you leave your child with TV in the house, he's not gonna watch it so long as he has his tablet, phone, and Wi Fi is Wi Fi in him. That's all they care about. I was in the hospital, you know, just sitting. This young girl came with her mother. You know, the mother said, you want to watch a TV that the hospital provide? She said, I get my own TV. When she sat in front of the mother, she did not even raise her head until they were called. She was on her own TV. So the Muslim Ummah, when you come in the masjid, for the most part, 99%. Who do you see in the masjid? Who do you see? The baby boomers and? The ex. Where the millennials at? Where they at? In the street. And most of the anxieties that you're going through, the baby boomers, all what is disturbing them and what they're going through and the ex generations and the problems that they're facing is coming from? It's coming from who? The millennials. So guess what? Millennials creating problems. X generations can't fix it. And the baby boomers, they in the message making dua and still in trouble. So unless we change this dynamics and modify the template. I ask you this before we kick off. Bi'ithnillahi tabaraka fi ulah. BBC, when you go on YouTube, you know how many subscribers BBC have or BBC has? You have an idea? Somebody started Googling right now. So Google is right there watching you. You know how many subscribers? 2.3 million. Huh? 2.3 million. 2.3. It's, it's, who is answering this question? Who's asking? Because the baby boomers, they don't even know what you boot or YouTube is. <laughs> and how many subscribers does CNN have? How many? 10 million? That's too far. How many? 5 million. A little off. How many? You see, he gets some little hint in his beard, so he came down a little bit and he got closer. <laughs> That's a good one. You see, his hint put him in the right spot. <laughs> BBC and CNN combined and joined together, their subscribers are not even more than 5 million. Do you know the subscribers to the YouTube channel that belongs to Justin Bieber? Huh? 10 million. 10 million? Come on, are you two behind? 15 still behind. 25? 25 still behind. He get, th get 33.5 million followers, subscribers to his channel. Justin Bieber was not even born when BBC was there. When CNN was there, but together, they do not even have his subscribers, and that young boy is not even up to 30 years. And all the khutbah that your children be listening is from Justin Bieber, or it's from T.I., or it's from, you know, Snoop Dogg, or from Peter Tosh, or it's from Benny Whaler, and all them whalers. <laughs> and your children, they memorize the khutbah of Justin Bieber than they do with the khatib of your masajid. 
and they're always watching and observing what is next than they are with the manabir. You don't have to agree, we're just talking facts here. And out of the 33 million, you know how many Muslims? Hmm. Out of 33 million, you know how many Muslims? More than 10 million Muslim kids, young boys and young girls. Worldwide. And guess what? Most of those who subscribe to his channels, and young boys, the millennials, Muslims, and the non-Muslims, some of them in status, they even way above Justin Bieber. But why did they subscribe to his channel that he doesn't even know about them? Because they cannot even identify who they are. And they don't even know what they got. And they don't even know their stature when it comes to what? It comes to your own lives. But when that, young, when that man in Canada discovered the potentials that Justin Bieber had, he said, you know what? This boy, I can boom him if I put him together. I can sell him to the world. So the mentorship changed the young boy's life. And today, he given kutba to your children in a way that you don't even know. And his kutba is not even more than five minutes whenever he drives Have you heard of, uh, you know, the song out there, you know, called Arab Money? The ex generations they don't know what we're talking about. The baby boomers, never. Have you heard of Arab Money? Buster Rhymes when he put it together? Akon? Sweets? Diddy? And all them boys, I know the young boys would say, how did Sheikh get to know all that? <laughs> Don't worry about that one. Don't worry about that one. <laughs> Ask yourself how you know them. <laughs> then we talk later on. <laughs> you see? And now all them boys that are singing and bringing up different, different beats, America is all about two things, flavor and beat. You get beat, people will be behind you. You get flavor, you can change flavor, that's it. And the boys, they're behind flavor and beat. And you know why they're not in the massage it? He said, when we come, man, we sit down just to respect our parents and pay attention, but sometimes we lose it and we can't keep up. So they're in the message, even sitting next to their parents, but they cannot really get to the speed. And see, some of you, your children are blessed to be what? An exception. But what we're talking about here generally, if you have 9% of people doing something and only 1%, when you, when you tackle and talk, are you talking about the 1% or the 9%? So majority is what we're talking about. You may say, in my family, we're different. Maybe that's one out of ten. And in shara, in fiqh, and usul of fiqh, and nawadiru la hukma laha. Issues and things that are rare has, have no hukum. Because the hukum is built based on what? Majority. So this is what is happening. And all those who are out there in Hollywood, Kennywood, Bollywood, Boobywood, and all the woods that they kindle and fire behind them, but they can't sense, all of them all together, now they even give up. You know, you know what? Now we even run out of rhymes. And Basta will tell you, yeah, we're talking the truth here. So what they do, they come in Islamic literature and they try to pull some words, either from Quran or words from Hadith. And they say, man, Quran, I get some power, powerful message. So they start taking some low words from Quran and from Hadith and from poetry that Arab scholars put together. And they start singing with it. And that's how Basta rhymes came with what? Buster Ram came with Arab money. Start saying Bismillah Rahman Rahim, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. With his Maharij al Khuruf messed up. That's no Maharij al Khuruf, that's Maharij al Khuruf. Messed up. And did he, what did he say? He said Alhamdulillah with my billions piling. 
Kafir saying, Alhamdulillah, with his billion piling. So they, they know that this is. And here is Swiss, Swiss. What did he say? He said, Don't even call me Swiss no more. Call me that would cast a dim shams a deed. <laughs> Confused, huh? <laughs> and all of the people that you hear in their names, all of them are ready. If they take shahada, Aki, they can do work for Islam than the Muslims are doing right now. Because your children, they listen to them. And tonight, Hirs defined the talk through Al Hirs Institute. And coming with Hirs vacation and changing the gear, we have message given to the young boys. Wherever you see Buster Rhymes, tell Buster Rhymes Al Hirs Institute get a message for him. Sisters, you see Nick, Nick Minaj somewhere? Sell so his and still get some better than what she got. You know Lady Gaga or Baby Gaga, whatever the Gaga she got? Sell so his and still get some better for them. And all of them are together because the young boys think like they're super and on the top. But guess what? The problems, the turmoils, the afflictions that they're going through, y'all don't even know the young boys because when they put their heads on the pillow, and nobody knows what they're going through. So what they're going through when they go, you know, to bed, that their entourage doesn't, um, their entourage don't know about, and Harris can identify and give them that which is better. And this dean, my brother, think not that I just embrace Islam. The brother who just um, came, Abdul Fattah, right? Allah bless him. Abdul Fattah been bringing him today after Juma, we were blessed to have even what a new shahad. Young boy embrace Islam, only 21, 21, 16, all the young boys we want you all to wait and understand this message and run with it outside. And run with it outside. This dean and this faith, all the sisters and all the brothers and all the young boys and all the young girls and all Without even exception, we have to understand this concept. That this deen or this faith that Almighty Allah had blessed us with. We are all blessed to have it. And all have been barkalized through the deen. And the name of Allah is conferred unto us. اليوم أكملت لكم دينكم وأتممت عليكم نعمتي ورضيت لكم الإسلام دينا. Almighty says in verse three of, of chapter Surah Al-Qud, chapter five. He said, "Today I've perfected your work. I've completed your deen and perfected my favor upon you." So all of us, we have been what nematized by Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, and the nematization of Almighty God accepts no what addition except if it is from Allah and approved by Him. Subhanahu Jalla fi Ula, and this is the message that Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came with for the whole world and for humanity at large. So no person among Muslims, young, old, learned, illiterate, or everybody, nobody can say that as a Muslim I have nothing to offer because Prophet Sallallahu said even when you run out of all resources the one that the one whom almighty allah will you the one whom almighty allah will use to uplift your status and make you the best will be through the feeble ones among you even a person who cannot move even a person who cannot mimic or a person who cannot even move an inch that person prophet sallam said he or she has something to offer for the deen and to the deen Nobody, absolutely no one can say, I have nothing to offer. And my brother, if you think that because you just embrace Islam and you knew into Islam, so you get nothing to offer. No, you even have something to offer more than those who were in it for a very long time. Because for the most part, those who had been born, you know, for some reason in Philadelphia, we came with different terminologies here. And they're saying that I'm new shahad, old shahad, born shahad, sky shahad, down shahad, and all shahadats. Where they came from with all these statements, ma anzal Allah will be amin sultan. But just categorizing people, no, you just knew into the deen. You this, you that, my brother, my sister, in faith, if you think that your sins are so, you know, piling and that you've done so much evil that you cannot even practice the deed so well because, you know, what you did in the past is so bad, I want you to take this as guarantee, free of charge. 
Sahaba, they were the worst of the worst in Jahiliyyah and the best of the best when they became Muslim. Sahaba were the worst of the worst in what? How did they become the best of the best? How did they become the best of the best? When Islam mixed with their system, Aki, nobody was able to catch up with them. Omar, do you think well, since, since Omar was, was born, he was like straight? He was deep rooted in Jahiliyyah. Abu Bakr, he was straight from childhood? Or he also was in Jahiliyyah? Before Islam, did they have deen? To warn people that they did not even receive what? Nadir, a warner before you. Before you, who was that you? So before Islam, they did not have Islam. They were in what? Why did they even call it Jahiliyyah? Why did the period was called Jahiliyyah? It's pure what? Ignorance. One of them will come to Prophet Sallallahu the hadith in the book of Imam al-Darimi, um, Rahimahullah. And by the way, if I ask, uh, you, you heard of this Darimi? Shukrana. Oh, shukrana. You, you heard of Imam al-Darimi before? If I ask you, was Imam al-Bukhari, you all heard of Imam al-Bukhari, right? How about Imam Ahmed, Ibn Hanbal? Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal, when he was asked, who is the Imam? He said, if you really want to know who is the Imam, is this man who was Sayyid. And he pointed at Imam al-Darimi. Said, that is, he is the Imam. And they asked, from whom do you advise for us to take our knowledge? He said, that man, Imam al-Darimi. Imam al-Bukhari, he never, ever in his life used poetry except one day in his life. Ibn Khalaf or Khalaf Ibn Khalaf al-Bukhari said, we were sitting in the circle of Imam Muhammad ibn Ismail, Imam al-Bukhari, when somebody came and whispered in the ears of Imam al-Bukhari that Imam al-Darimi had passed away. Then Imam al-Bukhari put his head down, he started crying. He cried for a very long time, he raised his head. He said, if there is anyone whom people supposed to weep after his death for a for very long time, after all the righteous people that pass, if we still have that person that's supposed to be this Imam al-Darimi, rahimahullah. Imam al-Bukhari was his student. Imam Muslim was his student. Imam Ibn Majid was his student. Imam Ahmad, Imam, all them big shots were his students. So now you at least know the level of Imam al-Darimi, right? Because Muslims will just tell you, well, I never heard of him, so he not checked to me. That's how Muslims have been talking, like, like they know all the sheikhs of the world. I don't know, man, I never heard of him. That was Imam al-Darimi. Imam al-Darimi, in hadith number two of his sunan, he reported. Prophet was sitting when a man came. And he said, Ya Rasulullah, inna kunna fil jahiliyyati ahla ibadati asnamin wa awthan. We were people of ignorance. In the, in the time of ignorance, we used to worship idols. We were completely what? Ignorant. And we used to slay and kill our own daughters. One day Allah blessed me with one. Falamma ajabat, when she responded. Responded here means when she became a toddler, able to walk. Whenever I call her, she will rapidly come. I called her one day, she rushed to me, and then I took her, passed by the house. On the backyard of our house, we have this deep well. I brought my daughter next to it, and then I took her. I held her by her hands, and then I aimed at the well. I was wiggling, wiggling. She thought that we played, and she started smiling and looking at me smiling, and I released her in it. He said, the last thing that I heard from my daughter was, Ya Abata, Ya Abata, twice. She spoke no more. Oh, Father, oh, Father. She did not speak after that. Prophet's head was down right there. And he started crying. <coughs> Sahaba became so angry. They said, what, what, what's wrong with you? You came and messed up the circle, man. Look at what you did. You made Prophet, you put him in tears. 
Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said, Da'u fa innahu yas'alu amma ahamma. Leave me alone. He's only asking that which bothers him, that which is really important to him. He said, A'id. Repeat what you said. He started narrating the story. Sahaba said, Prophet Christ so much that even his tears wet his own beard. Salawat Rabbi wa salamahu alayhi. Then when he raised his head, he looked at him. He said, do you believe in Allah? He said, I'll be a witness in Allah and that you are Allah's messenger. He said, فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ قَدْ وَضَعًا عَنْ أَهْلِ الْجَاهِلِيَّةِ عَمَّا فَعَلُوا Almighty Allah had forgiven the people of Jahiliyyah all what they've done in the past. فَاسْتَأْنِ فَعَمَلَكَ Allah had given you a new page for you to start with. This man will be a terrorist. The one who is actually taking people from the Jahiliyyah back to life. I was Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So this man was what? In Jahiliyyah. Isn't that one of the worst crimes? Okay, even if you are your enemy, your worst enemy, your worst enemy, will you take his daughter and release her in a well? I'm asking, your worst enemy, will you take his daughter and release her in a, in a well? Please to talk about your own daughter. Subhanallah. So he was what? Worse in Jahiliyyah. He said, the promise between me and Allah is that now that I have this deen, I make sure that I work for Allah, for Allah to see that I'm sincere, so that I can wipe all what passed in my previous life, so that between me and Allah is clean. I can embrace Islam, he became one of the best in the world. So from worse to what? That's how Sahaba were. Nobody on the earth like them, and nobody will be on this earth like them. Case closed, period. But in Jahiliyyah, they were what? But Allah blessed them with this deen, and they took it. So my brother was listening to me right now. All what you did in your previous life, and you just embraced Islam, or you did not even embrace Islam yet, but you can listen to this proposition, I want you to take this as a guarantee. All what you did or all what you've done in your previous lives, this Islam can wipe it. And if you embrace it and you are sincere, Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will uplift you. And guess what? From being the worst in 21st century, you can be the best. Because in America, we have the worst of the worst. And sometimes you can see among people in America, the best of the best. We have them in America here, Aki. Sorry, Aki, that's, you know, Philadelphia, John. <laughs> See? So if you think you've prodigal, uh, you've prodigal against yourself, committed so much sin, or sister, you think like I've done so much that I don't think God Almighty will forgive me. And my sins, you know, I've compiled so much sins that it's too big and it's too heavy. Okay, it's too big and too heavy on you, but in nothing heavy on Allah. In nothing heavy on Allah whatsoever you've done. When a person came, he said, Prophet, I've done, I've done. He said, seek forgiveness, what forgiveness? He said, that's too much. Then Prophet said to him, there ain't nothing kabir on Allah. Allah is Akbar. And he is Akbar u Kabira. So my brother, who just embraced Islam, the, young, the, the brother Abdul Fatah, he said, after the one who took Shahada, he got like four of them. They heard that we coming today, al Hirz is coming with a message they say that they knew because they've been following, you know, um, they say, Sheikh, we've been following you and Sheikh Khalid, um, Yasin, and this is how we learned the deen, so we coming today and that's why we're here. I tell you, if you've done the worst thing in your jahiliya, Islam will make you the best if you stick to it. And to our brothers who are not knowledgeable enough, don't think only knowledge will make you the best in Islam. You can be the best in Islam without being super knowledgeable. Sahaba, all of them were not at the same level, were they? Abu Bakr, when he became Muslim, did he you know, become the best as a virtue of his ilm? Uh, uh, it's only commitment with assiduity in it. It's only commitment 
with persistency. That's it. That's all. You persist. How many, how many hadith that you read in Bukhari, or you read in Muslim, or in Musnad, or Sunan, or Sahib ibn Hibban, or Mustadrak of Al-Hakim, or Shu'ab of Bayhaqi, and all the A'imma that you see, you know, on the authority of Abu Bakr and Siddiq. How many? I ask you right now, even give me one hadith on the authority of Abu Bakr Siddiq, some of you will even sweat till Fajr. <laughs> But no knowledgeable person among Sahaba and after Sahaba that will be like Abu Bakr ila qiyam sa'a. You agree or not? <coughs> Nobody, no knowledgeable person, no matter what he or she will do or had done, that will be like. Was he known in Jahiliyyah? Was only known to his own few. But after Islam, what happened? Even Etikarini heard his name. Even Dubai before Dubai heard his name. Even V.Y. Kenneth Majors heard his name. Even Bill Juice heard his name. That was Abu Bakr and Siddiq. So it's not all the time about now. Khalid ibn al Walid. Abu Bakr said, even the women of the world, you know, can give birth to a man like Khalid ibn al Walid. Did he become safe for Allah's a virtue um, through his knowledge? It's all commitment, huh? It's all what? Commitment. commitment. Abu Ubaidah, the Amin of this Ummah, is he the best because he's the most knowledgeable? Hello? No. no. Because he's the most knowledgeable? No. Okay, some of the Sahaba that became the best of the best, they did not even get chance to practice Islam for more than a day when they became Muslims. But the true commitment that Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed them with, and He subhanahu wa jalla jalalu witnessed from their hearts, okay, they became the best. So my brother and the young boys and the young girls that thinking that, you know, when I become Muslim, when I become a Muslim, the first thing I have to do is that I make sure that I get my Arabic tight and go to this place and learn Arabic and come back and start blowing the Arabic and start speaking all the yani yani Arabiya on the people and when he comes he start blowing some yani yani Arabic and people listen and say whoa that's so, that's so powerful man he's speaking Arabic and he's blowing the Arabiya if I have to be a better Muslim I also have to travel to Saudi to Egypt to Azhar to Zaha to Taqwa to Bakwa and also that I can be the best too Okay, this Arabic language is so powerful that sometimes when you speak it, even on the natives, you have to break it down on some Arabs. <coughs> so it's not all Arabic. That's good. And that's nice. And if you have it, you get one of the best treasures of the world. But that's not everything. Abu Jal spoke Arabic, where in all the Arabs, including the, the people of Arabia today. Where is he today? In Jahannam with his Arabic. Uqba ibn Abi Mu'ayyid, he spoke Arab, Arabic more than all the Arabs today. Do you agree with me? Now I want the Arabs to answer this one. Do you agree with me? Yeah. The Arabs, I want you all to be a witness to this. I, I guarantee, even if Uqba ibn Abi Mu'ayyid comes today, here's our Arabic today, he's going to tell the Arabs, you know, what y'all speaking? You speak some Chinese or some Puerto Rican language or some Africans. <laughs> he will not even understand the Arabic we're speaking. Where he at? In Jahannam. So Arabic is one of the best tools if you are blessed to have it, but that's not everything. So if you see somebody coming from abroad or from here, breaking down the Arabic and just speak, don't think he's the best of the best, huh? Because for the most part, when they start blowing the Arabic or start blowing some stuff, we think they're the best. And sometimes they even turn to be the problem in our own communities. And bringing fitness to our own cities. So my sister in faith, my brother in Islam, you can be the best. Uh, let me ask you this. After the Sahaba, who is the best through the Shahada of Rasulullah? Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. After Sahaba, who is the one person known to be the best? Sa'id ibn al-Musayyib. 
We'll get some little emails, a big shake over there. Maybe you come to Philadelphia, shake, we'll get your message, but it has to be in the bungalow, though. You know, when you finish with, with the three cools, then we can put some sedaka box in it. <laughs> Saeed ibn al-Musayyib that he mentioned is the best when it comes to ilm and knowledge. But the best of the best, a shahada from Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Sahih Muslim, the best of the best after the Sahaba is Uwais ibn Amr al-Qarani. Min muradin thumma min eh? Min Qaran. Who said this? Who said this? Who said this? I told you it's in Muslim, so that means it has to be from who? From Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is a hadith. خَيْرُ التَّابِعِينَ رَجُلٌ مِّن مُرَادٍ ثُمَّ مِّن قَرَنٍ لَوْ أَقْسَمَ عَلَى اللَّهِ لَا إِهِ لَوْ أَقْسَمَ عَلَى اللَّهِ أَوْ لَوْ أَقْسَمَ أُوَيْسٌ عَلَى اللَّهِ أَنْ سَيَحْصُلُ كَذَا وَكَذَا أَوْ أَنْ سَ يفعل الله بعباده كذا وكذا قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم لا أبره رب العباد أجمعين. Who was that man? Wais. Do you know of any hadith or any powerful quote that came from Wais? How did he become the best? We hope and pray that our Wais be like him. And all the Wais. Do you know the secret? He had a mother whom he was so dutiful to and obedient to. That was one. Two, every day when always wakes up, the breakfast that he will eat, when he finishes with his own breakfast, he will take the rest of the breakfast and start searching for poor people outside in the street and feeding them. And the only clothes that he had on, he will put it on. And the rest that he had, he will take it and start clothing people outside. And he used to say to Allah, Oh Allah, if I die as a result of hunger or die as a result of being, um, not, not having enough clothes, please forgive me because I have to take care of my brothers and sisters and for us to be on the same level in our lives. So please forgive me in case I die out of hunger. This is only what Uwais used to do. Prophet said he is the best of the best. After my companions, Umar, Ali, if you see Uwais, wherever you see him, he will come after me. The day that you see him, ask him to ask Allah to forgive you. If he asks Allah to forgive you, Allah undoubtedly will forgive you. Is that true knowledge? It's true what? Commitment. Benevolence. In the community. So brothers, avenues of Jannah are numerous. Everybody can be knowledgeable. Everybody can be rich. Everybody can be on the same level. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala dynamically he chooses and he gives each and every one what he what? I promise you 30 minutes. I believe my 30 minutes is up. And I didn't even warm up yet. <laughs> so what do you want? I want to ask your questions. Okay. <laughs> okay. So now see. That's commitment, Aki. And all what Muslims need today is the principle of Khudrawiyya. Um, Do you know the principle of Khudrawiyya? Have you heard of a companion, Anas ibn Malik? Have you heard of a companion, Anas ibn Nadr? Anas ibn Malik is more popular than Anas ibn Nadr, but Anas ibn Nadr was the uncle of Anas ibn Malik. Anas ibn Malik on the day of Badr, sorry, in Uhud, Saraka Iblisu an qutila Nabiullah, Faqa'ada ba'du sahabati Nabiullah, Famarra bihim Anas ibn Nadr, Fasa'alahum, ما الذي أقعدكم؟ قالوا قتل نبي الله صلى الله عليه وسلم فقال أنا صبن النضري فماذا تصنعون بالحياة بعده؟ 
qumu famutu ala ma mata alayhi nabiyullah when he passed by the companions on the day of Bad, uh, uhud they were sitting what caused you to sit down they say prophet is what is killed say what prophet is killed and if he is killed do you sit here if he is killed or is dead because shaitan shouted just to mess up the sufuf of muslims see sometimes those people who create problems in our community some 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 of them they can some jinn behind them and some iblis just pushing them so you shouted that prophet is prophet is what so sahaba said what then what's the point he the one kicking the dean for us he, he's dead so they sat down and as ibn another passed by them he said why are you sitting he said, because prophet is dead. He said, so if prophet is dead, what do you need this life with? And what do you need to live for? If prophet is dead, what do you need to be alive in this world for? Qumu, wake up and stand up and pursue the same thing that prophet Sassan pursued in his life and also do what he did. Sahaba said he became like the pharmacist of that day, man. He gave us injection, man. All of us stood up. And he said, you know what? As I'm telling you that, you know, you have to do what prophet did. You know, I'm going. I see you over there. They say, see you where? So I'm going, man. I can smell Jannah behind the mountain of Ohud. I can smell Jannah behind the mountain of Ohud. Inni la ajuduri ahaduna Ohudin. I can smell it behind the mountain of Uhud. Started running. Sahaba said after that battle, we saw Anas ibn Nadr, he was killed. We couldn't even identify his body. The only one who was able to identify his body was only one person. Because all his body, all the re remains of his body, it's either, you know, you see the, you know, the strike of and a bow or you see somebody you know jumping him and also killing him and stabbing him he said we get, we found 80 different wounds in his body how many 80 eight zero in his body different wounds the only one who identified his body was his sister and she was only able to identify him because they have the same finger what tapes so Haba said he was the one who gave us what hope on that day PGMA, y'all need some Anas ibn another also. Those who play no games. Because when it comes to your community, ain't nobody. You know, Sheikh, Imam, teacher, nobody is above your community. Your community is more important than, some indi than the individuals. Because your community is what, what? It's what binds you together. It's what brings you together. It's what unites you together. It's what brings everybody, the resources, the ideas. So the community is more important than just individuals. So you have to set your vision straight that this is what we want. And whoever will mess up our tagline or our motto, whoever will mess up our mission or our vision, like you have to have it written somewhere big that this is the mission. Somebody step in there, you know, playing games, you say, ah, you're wasting time, man. You need to take a back seat. You can't be a back in, sit in the back seat, you know, driving us. We have to discharge our own feelings. In Philly, two Maset, two Jumas, some non Muslims came, evangelists. They came in front of the masjid. They started shouting, writing, Muhammad he is a terrorist, or Muhammad is a killer, and Islam is the den of devils, and all the foreigners in America, you know, just go back home, you devils, you killers, you this, you that, in front of the message from the beginning of the khutbah to the end. Police came, couldn't even stop them. The biggest part, it's like maybe twice this space here, the message. The following Juma, they came. Did they even come today? I didn't, I didn't get the call that they came today. I can't give you any sense. See? Came to Jumu'ah. 
And the Muslims came out, hey, hey, yeah, yeah, the one who saying Prophet Muhammad is this, Prophet Muhammad is that, you know, we, we have to kill him, we have to do this, we have to do this to him, we have to... I say, Aki, you're not going to even touch that brother, and you're not going to even say anything or nothing will you even say against that brother. Because the Muslims that are in the masjid, they already violated the protocols that Prophet gave them. When Prophet says something, they say, let's wait and see what our Sheikh has to say. And Prophet speaks. How many of us say, we know that hadith, we know that hadith but guess what, you know, we have to face this, you know, you know. We have to be, you know, politicians about this issue. I was going to the member in Virginia one day. The sheikh stopped me right on my steps to the member. He said, "Sheikh, please, you know, on this, on, on the member, you know, um, no politics." I looked at him. Said, who, who, "Who are you?" <laughs> Sam the Imam. No politics. <laughs> Say yeah. He said, you know, politicians don't go to the member at 1 o'clock on Friday. <laughs> politicians, um, you know, from 1 o'clock to 1.30, it's not their spot. So I'm not one of them. He said, you know what? Yeah. You just go do your thing. If you sound happy, I'm not part of it. I said, I didn't, I didn't come here for you to be part of the movement. We already violated the commands of the Nabi. Uh, if we really follow in his full steps, will we even argue when we are among ourselves in the masjid? And the baby boomers, the reason why the millennials not even coming, they say because a bunch of the baby boomers and the ex generation, they're hypocrites and the munafics. That's what they say. They're munafics. They see you outside, they say, why you don't even come to the masjid? But you see them outside, they're doing something else. And they come for the most part, we see them even fighting. And I don't want to go to the masjid and see my father arguing with someone, or someone is arguing with my dad, because then, you know, I will just break, you know, oh, sorry about that. I will just, um, you know, elbow strike, or maybe uppercut, or maybe sidewinded kick, or maybe mountain block or something to the brother, and I don't want to do that. And maybe I can give him something and send him to Barzakh. So I'd rather be by myself outside, and I don't want to apply all them Bruce Lee, Jet Lee, and the Donnie Yen, and you know Van Damme kicks along with Schwarzenegger and with his own people down there in California. I don't want to do that. That's why I don't go to the masses, because a bunch of them, they're monafics. That, that's how they talk. You know, they may not say it when you're there, because they know, you know, especially with the African parents, you know, so they speak, you know, our box, you're going to give them some extra soda, because so they keep quiet. <laughs> So all what we need for them is a voice like whose? A voice like whose? Anas ibn Nadr. Miqdad said, on the day of Uhud, when Iblis shouted that Prophet was killed, and all of them sat, Prophet was right fi qalbil adu. He was in the middle when the enemies in the forest, all of them around him, and they started attacking him. He said, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Miqdad said, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did not even move an inch. He did not even move. All oh, what he started doing, picking up pebbles, just shooting at them with that, and just sitting. Ali said, when the thickness of battle becomes so intense, we all hide behind Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He was in front of the enemies. He did not even run. He was right there on that day. No companion in nobody with him. And they said, Amma Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Fajabalun tawdun wa turun shahiqun Ra'anun wa niqun alamun wa haliqu Qaswaratun wa harithun wa daigamun Usamatun laytun hizabrun haysamu By himself you seem like Jagu Chida and all together cougar coming with the snakes you know smiling and race rattle coming everybody running when he grabs you on that day it's even stronger than the jaw of nile crocodile and you better leave him alone that day because when he became fierce and nobody to stand in front of him until the enemies of allah run and prophet was standing right there by himself bleeding okay this day is not a game huh so when we come to the masjid, the masjid is not our houses. We can set our own rules in, the, in our own houses because we, bu we bought them houses and paying mortgage. When it comes to the masjid, we're not masjid al-iman. 
وعن كلهم ان المساجد فتحوه وفي انه لما بكسر سوى العلا المساجد لمن وان المساجد لمن وان المساجد لله so the masajid since the masajid all belong to Allah the masajid don't need our rules the rules of Allah should govern you go home tune in your kids you set up your own rules you outside you can crack a lock and move the way you want but Allah has his own spot his own place and his rules supposed to govern his own houses with this mentality I can shouldn't be even no shouldn't be problems in the masjid but most places where Muslims are fighting for the most part from Maine to California from South Dakota all the way to Texas from Florida all the way to Sacramento from Los Angeles all the way you know to Albuquerque all decided in America for the most part when Muslims have um, you know the most issues and problems here eh? when Muslims when they meet they always have issues in the masjid uh, people come to the masjid for peace of mind when people are lost they come to the masjid so that they can, can get themselves straight and clean themselves <coughs> and the young boys the millennials that we're talking about they're already going through some problems with their families maybe their parents maybe their siblings maybe maybe with the streets with their own so they're already going through some troubles and turmoils and challenges so they try to come to the masjid so they can clean their acts and they come to the masjid boom another problems what do you want them to go so when they go in the street you blame them who to be blamed who to be blame them it's just like Ramatni Bida Ihawan Salat. In Arabic adage, they say Ramatni Bida Ihawan Salat. They use this proverb for someone who blames someone and he has the fault. When you accuse someone of something and you are worthy of being blamed with the same thing, they say Ramatni Bida Ihawan Salat. That's the issue today. So, Muslims in Maryland. What is the population of Maryland? Huh? <coughs> How many? 60 million. 9.5 million. Maybe your information is not from Google, Bing, or Yahoo.com. Huh? 6 million. Only 6 million. Muslims, we can really take Islam to the six million denizens and the population of Maryland. We can do it. Sahaba from coast to coast, from continent to continent, they spread the deed. We can't even give it to six million. <coughs> Aki the governor, who is the governor of this state? Larry who? Larry Hogan by then, he's supposed to know what the principles of the deen are because he pledged and he took the office by also what? Bringing the security, the people of this state. We tell Islam already what get it locked in. We can also help and add value to whatever you have in mind. Maryland is the, they call it Maryland the little what? What's the nickname of your, 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 your state? The little what? <laughs> Come on, man. You all can be in Maryland. You already know this stuff. They don't want to say. What is it? The little America. <laughs> Out of all the 50 states, they call it the little what? Maryland. The land of Mary. Mary land. If in Mary, she get land. Muslims get nothing. See, the normals, see, Ch see the Chinese. In no state you will go except they get the loot, the loot Chinatown. The Italian boys, they get their own Italian town. The Mormons, you go to Utah, they locked it in. Ain't nobody will be mayor or governor of Utah except through the what? What happened to Muslims? 
What happened to Muslims? We sit in the masjid, you know, we sit in the masjid arguing how to, should we hold our hands this way? Should, you know, or hold it this way? Or, or when I say at takbir, I have to bring it here or bring it here? Say, can we eat McDonald's? Okay, can, can we go KFC? 25 years Muslims asking the same questions. We can't even come together to say if we can eat, what will be the best restaurant for our own kids? Okay, Muslims, we get the best food, but we can even we cannot even come with the best restaurant for the whole world. You go to Haram, you go to Saudi, Medina, Mecca, they get McDonald's over there, and you sitting here in America asking whether you can eat McDonald's. They already get it locked in. <laughs> and how much they make a, a day? You have an idea? How much McDonald's make today? $168 million. Muslims, we contribute more than half. <laughs> you go to Morocco, they get couscous, but they cannot even get a couscous restaurant. Get to Egypt, they get mulukhiya, they can't even make mulukhiya restaurant. And you go to Africa, they get Tunzafi, they can't even make Tunzafi restaurant. You go to some places in West Africa, they get food for better. They can't even come with food for restaurant. Good food. I keep the food of, um, what do they call it, McDonald's? I keep, if, 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 even the cat food is even better than nutritionally. You know, cat food is even better. But see the customer service? What happens? A person in the masjid asking and Muslims arguing, yeah, we can eat it. Yes, I heard this fat one. Yeah, we can do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He is asking and they're arguing, the baby boomers and the ex-generations, they're asking and arguing whether we can, we can eat or not. And their children already fill an application to work at McDonald's. <laughs> Where are we going? Like Allah asked, for Aina Where are we going? Twisted, Aki. So we just have to, Allah had given us the best. It's just that we allow shaitan to penetrate. Come together. Jami'u shamla fa inna al-khulfa aaru. Wa akhtilafu al-safi dhullim wa ankisaru. Koonu al-jidaru al-ladhi yaqwa al-jidaru bihi fa Allahu qad ja'ala al-islam abunyana. Come together. And put your resources together because schism is actually a shameful thing. And Allah had made all of us as what? One building. If this wall collapsed, can we sit here? We, all these pillars and the beams, will we get benefit of them if this is no more? So that's how Muslims are supposed to go. And we said to you that Sahaba, how did they divide themselves? Five, Five to six what? Categories. 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 The first? The best. The best. The God, you know, the government, Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, and Ali. The second, and the cabinet to the government, the advisors. Because the cabinet of the president or leader, they advise him, right? So that's Abu Dhar and Abu Darda. The third, the commandos of the deen, Khalid, Abu Ubaidah, and Saad. The fourth, the reciters and teachers of Quran, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, Ubay and Zayd ibn Thabit, Adl al Ridha Dahara. The fifth, scholars of Hadith Aisha, Abdul, Ab, uh, Aisha Anas, and Abu Huraira. The fifth, the muftis of the Ummah. Who and who and who? Abdullah ibn Umar, Abdullah ibn Abbas. And Mu'an, uh, the first batch, they can give fatwa, but they won't. They won't give fatwa. The second batch, they are scholars of hadith, but they will not talk about it. The last, they can also recite Quran, but they, leave it, they left it for the false. And in America, what keeps a branch of government from becoming very powerful? Checks and what? And balances and separation of power. power. Well, how did they get this? They get it from what you just heard. But Muslims, 
We sit in talking about, you know, we have to upgrade ourselves and we have to follow democracy and all that. They've been following, we've been following democracies until we turn to be from democracy to them crazy. <laughs> Sorry about that. I said today we, we're keeping it raw and real. Uh, can you get Quran and Sunnah and you talking about something else? How will you turn to be? You get the source. حكم الشرع إذا خالفت الشرع العقول إنما العلم خروج عن شكوك لا دخول ومخالفة الهوى والوقوف عند قال الله أو قال الرسول This is the pure knowledge It's coming out of doubts not plunging into it And when Allah and his messenger speak that's it That's um, code what? 49 HK1 See? The already locked it in. So this is how we say in brothers and sisters. And finally, have you heard of this leader, Mahmoud ibn Mamdud? Al Malik al Mudaffar Qutuz. Aki Qutuz was a slave. He was sold to slavery after his father's death, Mamdud. Al Khwarizmi, Qutuz was captured, sold to slavery. He grew up in it. So he grew up in what? Later on, one, uh, one um, king bought him. Long story short, he was freed. The Tatar, the Mongols, with the evilness, they started finishing and killing and taking the power of Muslims away from them. You know, from Baghdad to Sham to the, they finished with all Muslims around the world except Egypt. Do you know who saved Muslims? That was, as, uh, that was the result of Qutuz being what? Being the king and the leader of Egypt at the time. When Muslim leaders received the letter of Hulaku, Aki, they shivering. When they received the letter of Hulaku, all of them shivering now. Except Qutuz. When he received it, he said, what, what, who, who came with this? He said, hey, just hang him over there. Do you know the letter that he wrote, Qutuz wrote, um, Hulaku wrote to him? The name Hulaku, some Muslims even at that time, when they hear it, it's just like Israfil is about to blow the trumpet. And because of this, Muslims, the moment the fear of Allah is out of our heart or get diminished, that's the moment that our fear will be also diminished from the hearts of those who do not like the faith. But the more you increase it, the fear of Allah in the heart, your fear will also increase in your hearts. That's the principle. Hulaku wrote, مِن مَلِكِ الْمُلُوكِ شَرْقًا وَغَرْبًا إِلَى الْمَلِكِ الْمُضَفَّرِ قُطُزِ الذي هو من جنس المماليك الذين فروا من سيوفنا يعلم الملك المضفر قطز أن نحن جند الله في أرضه خلقنا من سخطه وسلطنا على من حل عليه غضبه وقد سمعتم أن فتحنا البلاد وقتلنا معظم العبادة فاتعذوا بغيركم وأسلموا إلينا أمركم نحن لا نرحم من بكى ولا نرق لمن شكى قلوبنا كالجبال عددنا كالرمال الحصول لدينا لا تنفع ودعاؤكم علينا لا يسمع من حاربنا ندم ومن طلب الأمان سلم فلا تطيل الخطاب وأسرع برد الجواب What type of arrogance is this? Those who understand Arabic you may not understand the whole thing, but at least you know that this is so, like, this man has to be arrogant. He said, from the king of all the kings, from east to west. <laughs> the king of all the kings, from east to west, talking like he, like Fir'aun. Where is Allah? The king of the, from east to west. 
to the king of Egypt, Kotos, who is one of those who run away from our sword. You, the king, and your subjects, all of you know that we are the representatives of God on this planet. He created us from his wrath and anger, and he imposed us upon those who are arrogant and don't listen for us to punish them. So listen to this. Hulaku said, We have no heart for the feeble, and we are merciless for whoever complains. And you've heard that we opened different, different places and we conquered Muslims. There's no way for you to run away from our swords. Our hearts are hardened, and harder than what? Mountains and rocks. Merciless, and we have no fear. Our number, even over what? More than sands. And our swords, sharper than whatever you could imagine in your life. And our horses, faster than light. Guess what? Hiding in your houses will never prevent you from being killed by us. And even if you pray against us, God won't answer. And we don't want you to spend and write long story. Just make sure you are concise when you respond to us. And be aware that if you don't, you will be in deep trouble. Wassalam. That's it. Now, can you give this, this, this letter to any leader today? If that leader is a Muslim, he's going to melt. If he's a disbeliever, he's going to blow up. That's what he said. Long story short, on the day of Jumu'ah, when Muslims on the Manabir, they met in a place called Aini Jalut. That's where the battle took place. At the beginning, they almost, tata, they almost seized the wall. Almost. And about to win. When Kotos on the top of his horse realized that hey, the way the, you know, the, the battle is going, they will win. And if they are you know, successful and they able to kill us today, that means the power of Islam is gone. Why? Because this is the only country that left for Muslims. Kotos jumped from the top of his horse. He took his hooves, whatever they put to protect their heads in the battlefield, he put it on the floor and he made sujood to Allah and he started putting dust on his face and his head. He said, Oh Allah, they call me the king of Egypt, but you the kings of the kings and I run out of power. Please help your slave Kotos against Tatar for the deen to flourish. Ain't no leader in the world that will do this. They will prevent you even teaching and preaching and bringing about Islam. Will there be this hammer? Making sujood, putting dust, humiliating himself in front of Al Malik Al Quddus, Al Salam Al Muhaymin, Al Jabbar. Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala fi ula. He said, "If we are killed today, no Islam. That people will be able to join because that will be over." That's when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala changed the whole thing. And the Muslims gained the power. And in less than an hour, the battle flipped. And that was the end of the Mongols, the end of Tatar, and they were to no return. They were gone. As a result of who? Qutus. Who was before what? A slave. Do you know how long he was a leader for? Only one year. How long? <coughs> Only one year. United Muslims around the world. How many Muslims, how many years have you have you been here in PGMA? <laughs> how, how many years? Thirty years. How many? Shukran Baba. In one year, he united Muslims. After the battle, and they won. Do you know what happened? The leader, the king, was killed before they even reached home. You know who killed him? Muslims.
They say because he will just show up that he is the only one who made it. Hey, let's kill a man before we return back to Egypt. <laughs> who killed him? <laughs> Tetar were not able, they were not able to kill him. Who killed him? That's why the Muslims selling Muslims today are in no kafir will sell Muslim because he can. Except with the aid of who? That's the bottom line now. Salahuddin al Ayyubi. When Arnaud seized the merchandise of Muslims and he killed Muslims, he said, Aina Muhammadukum Yansurukum, where is your Muhammad to help you? Salahuddin was sick at the time. He said, Oh Allah, please do not take my life until I teach this Kafir a lesson. <laughs> They never saw Salahuddin laugh and he said because Prophet was accused. In the battlefield, he met that person who said, Where is your Muhammad to help you Muslims? Salahuddin al Ayyubi seized him and choked him by his neck. He said, You ask, Where is Muhammad? Muhammad is no more. But Anna Naibu Muhammad in Wal Nasir, I'm the representative of Muhammad and his helper. I'm here on his behalf for you. Can you listen to the talk? Can you guarantee that you can open your mouth with pride to say you're the representative of Muhammad in Maryland? Can you do it? We saw in the, you know, schism and problems and you know, divisions and... So this din, Ikhwan, is not a joke. It's not playing. And all what Muslims can do is that the way Muslims rule we can add value, and we can bring values to whatever America has. Because wherever Islam arrives, it must be what? Success and peace must be, you know, vivid. So Muslims accusing people, accusing leadership, our leader this, our leader that won't take you anywhere. I arrived in Boston to give a talk in the, first in, in the first high school in America. Over there in Boston, when I arrived in, um, in the airport, Muslims, you know, the brothers were outside to pick me up to give this lecture. I said, let me refresh my wudu and come out before they, you know, pick me up. I went in the bathroom, I was sitting, you know, just answering the call of nature. I raised my head, I saw inside the bathroom, Ajallakumullahu wa ra'akum. Somebody wrote, he said, he, this is what he wrote verbatimly, I'm reading. He said, impeach Trump. <laughs> and somebody else came, he crossed the word impeach and he wrote on top of it, jail Trump. <laughs> See how twisted, man. Do we go to the bathroom to read? <laughs> That's what we go to read? To read? I can when people go to the bathroom, man, they, they're in there for serious operation, drop it and come out. Ain't got no time for reading. Everybody they kill jail. What is this? <laughs> Just backwards thinking. I like can nobody who, who nobody in America who's worthy of our prayer that we should pray for like our president. Person will say, hey, come on, my sheikh, you're going too far here, brother. Ain't going no too far. Imam Ahmad said, if I have a dua, only one dua that if I make it, Allah will answer. The one who will be worthy of that dua will be the leader, whether he is righteous or not, because if he is straight. The people, the ra'iyah and the subject will be strained. If he's messed up, the country will be messed up. That's Imam Ahmed, Imam Ahl Sunnah. So if you think your Sunnah is too high, just check it out. <laughs> Ain't nobody whom we're supposed to pray for like our president. Aki is already there. And nobody supposed to be president of America today than Donald J. Trump. If you say there's somebody else, it's like you saying Allah you chosen for miracles, you know, in different times. No, Allah, somebody else is supposed to be there. You just brought this. <laughs> Can somebody take effect or change something or be a president or be a leader without Allah's leave? Man Malikul Mulk. 
من الذي يؤتي الملك من يشاء Who made him to be in the White House? If Allah says no, can he be there? So his case closed. Ah, you know, just talking bad things. But, uh, guess what? If we, we as Muslims, talk about Islam, and this man, this president, our president get to know what Islam is, and from head to door, you know, back and forth, just like we talk about what Prophet did, even if he doesn't embrace Islam, to know the values that Allah gave us, subhanahu wa ta'ala, wa ta what will happen? And you know our president, he loves tweeting. He's just going to go and tweet, hey, hey, and you know, you get it twisted. The Muslims, you know, you have to check their source. Don't look at Muslims, look at Muhammad. And then nobody will look at the life of Muhammad and get the deen twisted. But Muslims are looked at today. So, you know, accuse don't be blaming and cursing and all. You can say... Okay, I tell you, if you search, anathematize, and curse the president, where will that take you to? Will that promote you? Will that make you like better, like you sitting in the house, keep on accusing, keep on blaming, keep on insulting? That will promote you? But at least you make dua, and the dua is accepted, at least you're making some. That's the fiqh of Imam, uh, Imam who? Imam who? Imam of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah, Imam Ahmed. That's the understanding of the deen. So you can keep on talking and cursing presidents and doing this and try to say bad things. You can talk about our president till the day of Qiyamah. Ain't nothing going to change unless we change ourselves, as Allah said. Like Ibn Umar mentioned, he said the key to the hearts of leaders is in the hands of who? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you keep your relationship with Allah solid and pure, Allah will change their hearts for you. But if you mess up your relationship with Allah, Allah will tighten your heart against you. See the fiqh of who? Who said this? Who said this? Abdullah ibn Umar, the companion. Can you have any faqih today like him? This is the fiqh indeed. But if you say, hey, I, I still don't care, I will talk, okay. well, ask, ask Egyptians what happened. Ask, uh, ask you know, Tunisians what happened. Ask um, um, Iraq what happened. And ask Libya what happened. They did all what they did. What is their status today? Are they promoted? They get better life today? They have peace today? So if you try to take it by your own hands and twist it, you're just going to make it harder and harder. Just return to Allah and follow the principles. Things will be what? Made easy on you. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to unite Muslims. So in brief and closing, we say to the young boys and the young girls, I hope you get the message. You get to see all the boys that I mentioned. The Yaz boys or the Hala boys. You all know the Hala boys? Y'all know the Hala boys? You know, you know them? Yeah, okay, so you see the millennials, right? The Hala boys. Tell the Hala boys and tell, you know, Snoop that his dog is lost and we can help him find his dog. Tell 50 that we discovered his scent. And tell Tupac he missed it already. So we have three Pac today. And tell B. Mali that today we get D. Mali. Bob Mali is B. Mali. D. Mali is Dawa Mali. Giving it to the young ones to carry it on. Our sisters, you've done from the fajr of this deed what people didn't do. So to our sisters, don't think you behind. No, you in front. As a result of our mother, Khadija, you have your own status. You can do today what Beyonce can do. Beyonce can jump here and there, here and there. It's only like an hour entertain people. She can only entertain, but she can change lives. But you can do it. Nicki Minaj, she can change lives. She can do an all the way, you know, baking and shaking, all that them things, you know, that they don't, they can't even break an egg. All what they're doing is just towards building a white elephant. Can you see that elephant? Can you see white elephant? That's what they're building up, or that's what they're preparing. So sisters, you're in that level. Your mother Khadija, your sister Aisha, and your daughter Fatima, they've paved the way for you.
and you important in the dean. And as we said earlier, you a nation builder. You're not a pleasure giver, as the you know hair salon claims or the beauty store will tell you. And inshallah, tabarak wa taala, the new shahad is those who just embrace Islam newly. Don't think you just came into the deen, you can't do, do extra. One companion was standing in front of Prophet Sallallahu and when they called for the um, battle to kick off, he was eating dates. He said, what? This is going to take me too long, man. And he threw the date, and he ran to the battlefield. And that's where, where he passed away. He said, because eating a date is keeping me away from Jannah. Okay, this, this, is, this is heavy. But today... This is what we came with. Tomorrow I will talk to you about a man who gave shahada when he was stabbed from his back and he was dying. He gave the one who stabbed him shahada. The one who stabbed him became a Muslim after he had stabbed him. We're going to talk about this man tomorrow. Bi'ithnillahi tabarak wa ta'ala. So we ask all of you, inshallah, to show up and bring the young boys and bring the new shahada and bring the sisters and bring whoever. Muslims now, Muslims, let them come hear the message. Because our message is nothing but what? A message of morality, message of unity and social solidarity for everyone and every American and those who listen to our proposition or what Al Hirz Institute Hirzified. So this is what we came with. What I ushered onto you, place it in Nimbus Stratus and allow it to hover on people and drop the rain on them. And wherever you navigate, drop it on them heavy. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this proposition to benefit each and every one. You cannot memorize the whole thing. Just take a piece and share it with your family. Share it with your co-workers. Share it with your own neighbors. Share it with people. Just take the message outside, outside Masajid and share with people. So this is what I came with for tonight. We see you tomorrow. Be even late. Tabarak wa ta'ala. Fajr. So when you place it in your Nimbus Stratus, allow it to travel. Tasiru biha al-rihu mahma sarat. Wa tahdu suratu bihinna al إن وردت رباها يا سائق العيس وشارفت دوحها والنخيلة مل إليها وحبس إليها طويلة إن لي في نحو ذلك الميل حي ميلة and we stop here until we see you tomorrow and sorry if I've dropped it heavy on you today and I apologize but that doesn't mean I regret what I said remain blessed والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته